Hello and welcome to today's Techmatics Tech Toolbox session. Today we're going to be teaching you how to create automated workflows and particularly today we're going to focus on those of you who are selling courses, coaching programs, training of any kind that you're going to want to have some kind of automation in place to check in, follow up with your students and even, we can take this to the next level, giving people the option to take different actions based on where they're at in their training. And I would like to acknowledge one of our amazing users today, Karen, uh, for giving us today's topic suggestion, who also has given us the most beautiful little hand-drawn diagram and said, how do I do this? And by the way, if any of you are ever planning on creating automations, or oh, can I just ask everyone to put themselves on mute for a moment? Um, bear with us for a second. Um, if you're creating automations, turning your ideas first of all into a visual drawing is always the best place to begin because this is going to help you put what is it i want to do what's the journey and the steps i kind of ideally want to happen because then if you share that in the live chat box with one of our tech experts inside your account in that live chat box they can actually help you go well that can work but it needs to be done in a different way or it help them at least come back with uh, with some suggestions as to how that idea could come to fruition so let me show you i've got um, karen's permission to show you the amazing picture that she shared with us today um, Karen's come to us and said, how do I make this happen? Basically, what she's asking is when a student signs up for a course, how do we, first of all, give them that registration information, that registration confirmation, the links to their portal to go and access that training, that workshop, that recording, that digital download, whatever it might be. And then how do we continue to stay in touch with them and give them these different options to say, hey, where are you at? Um, I want to either carry on learning, I'm still going through the course, or I've finished my course, so now we want to send them a review link to leave a review because their course is finished. Or they're like, okay, please leave me alone. I don't want any more emails about this course. I'm fine. I'm just going to crack on with it in my own time. So I love this diagram because it's how you know, Karen particularly wants to make this work behind the scenes. And I'm going to show you today how to actually build this example out. Now, bear in mind, guys, it's really important that you understand that just as doing anything, there are always unlimited ways to do anything at all. OK, there's more than one way to, to, to tie a shoelace. There's more than one way to cook a roast dinner. Right? The outcome can be the same, but via many different ways of putting it together. I'm going to show you just one way of the many that you can make this happen, which is to do a repeating circling check in with a student on a course and giving them these three options each time. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create this trigger. This is what fires off the automation. What makes this automation happen in the first place? Now, in this particular case, it's going to be a new student enrollment, i.e. a new student has joined a course. We're then going to need to create an email inside our email builder that will have the text in it that will um, remind them, here's how you log in, here's the link to your thing, and how are you going? with these three buttons in that template email that's going to give them these three options. Now, these are going to be buttons. I'm going to be showing you how to do all of this. Don't worry. Each of these are going to be a button and each of those buttons are going to have some kind of link inside the button that's then going to make the next thing happen. So either it's going to be keep on learning, just leaves them there, or it's going to be I'm finished. And we're going to send them to our Google business page to leave a review, or that could be your Facebook business page, for instance, for review. Or the third button here, which is stop emailing me, is going to be what we call a trigger link, um, which is then going to remove them from this particular course reminder workflow, but not unsubscribe them or remove them from our list. So we're going to show you now how to walk through this particular process. Now, I'm actually going to begin with writing this email, the email template we want to create that's going to go in a circle and keep reminding people about their course or their product that they've purchased. So log into Techmatics, click on marketing and emails, and we're going to go to the email builder. Because remember, we build emails in the builder and we send them in campaigns or in workflows. So let's go into our email builder. Remember to always go and find your master template because your master template you build once with all the footers on the bottom, any social share links, the unsubscribe link that you need. Um, so find your master. There's my master template. Click on your three dots and clone it. 
right? You're not editing your master, you're cloning your master and then give it a name. So let's pretend this course, uh, this course is actually Karen, because I'm gonna pick on you, what's your course topic, Karen? <laughs> What topic do you teach? You want to drop it in the chat or turn your mic on to tell us? Teach gluten-free education and awareness. Gluten-free, love it. Okay, so let's call this the gluten-free course. Um, student check-in email. Okay, that's what I might call this. Gluten-free course, student check-in email. We're going to press clone and first of all, it's going to give us the option to build out this particular email and you have full creative freedom as to what you want it to look like. Maybe you've got an image you want to stick at the top that's your course cover image. So click on your little left hand image, choose your course cover. I'm just going to pick something random for the sake of demonstration. Let's pretend that's the cover for my gluten free course. Then um, in our little plus sign up here is where we pull over all of our elements. If I wanted to add some text, drag and drop the text element. I'm going to say hi, contact first name. The um, little looks like a cursor over a box. If you hover over that, it says custom values. Click on that and press contact first name. And that's going to put the contact first name in there. Now, remember, you can change all the formatting if you want. If you don't want that to be bold, if you do, if you want to change that from a heading to just normal paragraph text, you can change the colors, the fonts and everything you want there. Um, now, this is going to be the email like we've got in Karen's diagram here that's going to repeatedly send over and over again. It's just going to keep sending out at the frequency that you choose. So what do you want that repeating check-in email to say? Obviously you write whatever you want. Um, thank you for joining my gluten-free course, blah, 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 blah. And obviously write whatever you want. Then you can add in a number of different custom fields. So if I go back to this custom values, we can scroll down when it's course related, you need to go to this option called membership contacts. Membership in Techmatics refers to any product that's inside your courses and memberships section. So it might not necessarily be an actual membership, right? It could be a course, it could be a workshop recording, it could be a webinar recording, it could be an ebook, it could be a digital download, but anything that's stored in that products area of the courses and memberships area is going to be pulled out from your membership contacts section. So when you click on that, you've now got a whole bunch of other options you can pull in to your email that's going to pre-fill and automatically fill that individual's personal information. So for instance, we might say, here is your login email. That's the first thing we're gonna pick. The next thing, let's go back to custom values, back to membership contacts. Here is your login URL. And we can even add in, I'm just gonna make a space. We can also add in their password. We can add in a space. We can even put in, um, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff in here you might like to pull over. And um, the offer title is the course that they've purchased. Okay, offer title. So the first thing I'm going to do is split them all up into different lines. Uh, maybe we want the offer title to be at the top. So I'm going to highlight it, cut it. Um, you could even, thank you for joining my, replace that with membership contact offer title and it's going to replace what they've bought there if you want to do that okay you don't have to you can just text write those words um i personally text write the word there the reason why is because if they've purchased multiple offers it's tech is tech right <laughs> it may it may put in the wrong contact offer there however we are going to be telling our workflow if they've purchased this gluten-free course, then send this email. So it will pull there the title of the offer that that workflow is related to, just FYI. But you can either pop that in or put the title in, but that's what that code does. Then you've got some text. Now we've got their membership URL. I might put that first, oops. Membership URL is basically going to give them the link that they need to click on to log into your course. Okay, so I put in here, log in link, and then paste in that code. Then next to their email, I'm going to go log in email, semicolon, then the code for their email. And then finally, we've got their password. And this will pre-fill with whatever the password the system generated. Um, so log in password can go like that. Now you don't have to put the password in. Word of advice, I personally don't put this in. 
because I have found from my own student experience that some students do get really upset that that has been recorded in an email and that it's you know potentially viewable by somebody. So I personally just put the login link and their email. I don't include the password just because I found it has made some people feel a bit uncomfortable, okay? Up to you what you choose to do, just sharing some experience. <laughs> so I normally just do login link, login email, now, we've got the basics in there. Of course, you can put any other text. You might like to say, don't forget to check in on the Facebook group, whatever stuff you want to say in this particular email. But if we go back to Karen's diagram here of what she would like to do, we then want to give them a couple of options. Um, I'm finished, or please stop emailing me about this course. Now, because they want to keep on learning, um, there's not much we need to do with that. Um, it's just going to, uh, they're just going to stay in the automation. So what I would do here is instead of actually putting a button for keep on learning, I'm just going to put something like, um, if you want to just keep on learning, I will be in touch with you again soon because we don't need to put a link or a trigger link or an action in for something that doesn't require an action, right? If they wanna just keep hearing from you, they're just gonna stay in this automation. Um, I'll be in touch with you soon. Oh, tough, <laughs> I'll be in touch with you again soon. Okay, um, keep going, see you later, all right? Um, alternatively, if you have finished your course or if you'd like to stop getting reminders about this course, then please hit oops, one of the options below. Okay, da -da -da -da. I'm not gonna worry about spelling right now, this is only love from me. <laughs> okay, whatever you wanna say. So we've put the email, now please guys, remember to always press save. Save template, save template, save template. This is a cloud-based platform and like all cloud-based platforms, if you lose your internet connection, you could lose your work, okay? So press save all the time, make it an obsessive habit <laughs> and you'll never find yourself in a situation where you've lost loads of stuff. So what we need to do next is add our little buttons, okay? So we've got here, we want either to give them the option to say, I finished my course, let's send them to a review or we want to remove them from this workflow if they don't want reminders anymore. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our email builder on the plus button on the top left hand side it opens up all of your different elements and you'll see that one of the elements we can choose is a button. So I'm going to drag and drop. It's a bit funny. There we go. Drag and drop. There's our button. I'm going to get rid of that bad boy there. And we've got two buttons. Now that doesn't look great because there's one on top of the other. I want mine side by side. So what we need to do is create two columns so that we can have our buttons side by side instead of on top of each other. How do we do that? Back over on your element section, scroll down underneath your elements and you'll see here you have a two column box. Drag that, drop your two column box over. Oh gosh, my internet is being fancy today, isn't it? Is it going to do it? Oh, it's dropped it at the top. No, nope, let's remove. Let's try again. Let's go back, drag and drop. Come on, get it, come on, come on. You've got to like fiddle around with this if your internet, my internet connection isn't fun when I'm doing live streaming at the same time. <laughs> this is an internet issue, by the way. Oh, it keeps like trying to do it. Come on, come on. There we go, got it, <laughs> got it. And now I've got these two columns. Now I can go to this drag and drop section, put one there grab the other drag and drop section and put the other one there. So now we've got it inside this beautiful little two-sided columns. What do we wanna happen now? So first of all, let's put our text in. We've got one that wants to say, I'm finished the course. And the other one we wanna say, please take me, stop reminding me, okay? So first of all, click on the button you wanna edit over on the left-hand side where it says button text. You're gonna say, I've finished my course. Okay, the next one we want to say, um, please stop the reminders. Okay, we've now got our text in. We can change the color. So clicking on the button color over here, pick whatever color you like. Let's pretend I want it pink. Okay, da -da -da -da. choose your color, very nice. Now, what needs to happen next? Over here, we're gonna press save, 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 save. <laughs> The next thing we need to happen is if someone clicks the button to say, I finished my course, 
in Karen's example here, she would like to send them straight to leaving a Google review. So you're going to go to your Google business page and you're going to grab your Google review link. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, simply type your business name into Google and scroll down until you find your Google business page. Click on where it says how many Google reviews you've got and then get more reviews and it will give you your public Google review link page. OK, back to your builder, click on your I finished my course button and where you've got your text, scroll down, you've got link URL, paste in your Google link URL there. Press save. And now that button, when somebody clicks that, is going to take them to the Google review page. Now, the next thing we want to do is put some kind of link in this button that's going to remove them from this automation. Now, there are a lot of different ways to do this, as I've said, but I'm just going to show you one of the ways right now. I'm going to just press duplicate page over here and open up a second tab in my Techmatics account. So I'm going to go now and create what's called a trigger link. What is a trigger link? A trigger link is a URL that you want the system to track clicks on, i.e. you want to be able to create a workflow in the future that is triggered by someone clicking that very particular link. So what I want to do here is create a link that when somebody clicks that button saying, please remove me from this workflow, we're going to be able to create an action from it. So what do we want to happen if somebody does click this? Ideally, what we'd like is a little page will just pop up to say, congratulations, you've now been removed from the course reminders. Um, however, if you do want to ask me anything, please email this email address or whatever you want it to say. And that's basically just going to be a little page pop up. OK, so I'm going to go into websites and funnels and um, it doesn't matter whether you pick a website page, a funnel page. It's just a web page. I'm going to simply press create a new funnel um, from blank. Um, we're going to call it um, stop the gluten free course reminders. That's what I'm going to call this page. I'm going to press create. And it only needs to simply be just a piece of pop up text. OK, we're not building a fancy, sexy page here. We're just literally creating a confirmation page text only. That's just going to say, congratulations, you've been removed from the reminders. All right. So I'm just going to call this um, remove removed from the gluten free course reminders path is going to be what comes after your domain. So, for instance, if the domain you've connected to your Technatics account is glutenfree.com, the path is going to be forward slash, um, I don't know, reminders, reminders finished, reminders cancelled, whatever you want to put, <laughs> a confirmation. It, it doesn't matter. It's not a public link necessarily. It's just something, it's just a page. We just need the URL to make our trigger link. So I'm going to press create the funnel step. We just need a simple URL, that's all. Now I'm going to press edit. It's going to be a completely blank page. Give my internet time to catch up with me. All right, I want this to quite simply just be a medium width page, add a row. I would only want one single column, add an element, and it's just going to be some text. Okay, so I'm just going to literally pop some text in here. And this test is just going to say, um, thank you for updating your preferences. Um, you will no longer receive, will no longer receive reminders about your gluten free course. And then whatever you want to put, you know, if you want to chat, contact me on blah, 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 blah. Okay, obviously, you might want to Put a little bit more info in there but all this is is just a confirmation pop-up so you do not need to make this fancy or sexy you're going to press save you're going to press publish give it a second publish da -da -da -da. and it's going to say what domain is this connected to i'm going to pick my domain that's connected to my techmatics account for you that's going to show your domain and now what it's done is linked this page to your whatever.com okay it's live it now exists i'm going to press back we need to get the URL for this confirmation page to make our trigger link. 
So let's go and wait for this to catch up with itself. <laughs> Inside this little page step, you've got your little link right there. How good is that? So we can go and check that, copy the link, go paste it somewhere into a new tab just to check it works. Ta-da, there it is, it works. Okay, so that is the URL that's going to be our trigger link. So make sure you've copied that. Go back to your Techmatics account. Now inside marketing, and emails, you have this trigger links um, option on the top of your menu. Click on trigger links and you're going to press add link. The name of the link is for your reference. So I'm going to call this stop reminders for the gluten free course. What's the URL? The URL is that confirmation page of you've been removed from the workflow. Paste it in press save. This trigger link now exists. Here's what I like to do. Refresh my page. <laughs> it just makes sure that the system has refreshed and acknowledged any updates that have been done. So we've now created a trigger link. So inside the email we were building in the section where it says, please stop the course reminders, we're going to click on that button. And over in your button itself, Da, 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 da. What actions do you want to happen? You want to send them to URL and the URL is that particular URL that you've connected to a trigger link. You're going to press save. Okay, your email's done. You've got your links in your two action emails. Now we're going to go and create our workflow that pulls this together. Are you ready? <laughs> So now let's go to our workflows, our automated workflow section. We're going to press create a new workflow. We're going to start from scratch. Let's create a whole brand new baby over here. Ta -da, ta -da. What's our trigger? Let's go back to our picture here. What's our trigger? What fires all of this off? It's a student joining our course. So the trigger is, click on trigger, it's going to be memberships, remember memberships, I think we might have updated this to courses now, have we? Oh, it's been updated to courses, that's good over here. So what's the trigger? It's going to be that somebody has signed up for our course. So you see there under our courses, it says new sign up. Now it doesn't matter whether that product is a workshop, a webinar, an ebook, digital product, you're still going to be clicking this link. Somebody has purchased that thing. Okay, now we've got to say to, say to the system, what have they purchased? So you're going to click add filters, select the offer. Offer means the checkout. Remember, the offer they have purchased is the gluten free course. Now, I obviously haven't uploaded a gluten free course into this test account. <laughs> so let's pretend that my astrology course is the gluten free course. Okay, because you have to have gone and actually added your product first. Otherwise, it's got no product to pick, right? Now, even if you've only created the title and the checkout, that's fine. It doesn't actually need to have content in it for you to set this up. Just at least go and create the title and the offer checkout, and you can make this work. So if someone has signed up, what happens next? Now, instead of going straight to the welcome email, I like to just tag them just to make sure that there's a tag in the system for later on. So let's press add a tag, add a contact tag. And we're gonna say, has joined the gluten-free course. Add the tag and save. So now, they buy it, they get tagged. What else are we going to do? Let's just send them now the, web, the welcome email. So we're going to press add and we're going to press email, send an email. And down here, because we've built our email in the email builder, it's going to come up in this drop down templates area. And what did we call ours? I think it was called gluten free. There it is. There's our gluten free student check in email. Boom. Now, what's cool about a recent update, guys, is you can actually edit that email right from within your workflow right here by pressing edit. You no longer, 
I go and open this here, you no longer have to go back to the email builder and edit it over there, save it and come back here. You can now edit emails inside a workflow from inside the workflow. How good is that update? <laughs> That's very fun. So press save. So what it's done now is um, you are sending them the email, which is you can put a note to yourself here in action name, email, let's call it student reminder check-in. Okay. Um, who is it from? Do you want it to say your name? So I might put this from Karen. Okay. And the from email you want it to come from, and then the subject of the email. So I would call this um, checking in on your uh, gluten free course. Okay. Lurchin. There we go. And then press save. So now someone signs up for the course, they get tagged, and then they get that email with their login details and the options to stop the reminders or I finished, now please remove me. What we're going to do next is we want to repeat, if we go back to Karen's example here, she wants to keep checking in with her students every 14 days in Karen's example. Now you can check in whatever frequency you choose, here's how you do it. So we're going to press add a step, and this is called add a wait step press wait and I'm going to put a note to self wait 14 days because Karen wants to wait 14 days in her example wait for a time delay wait for 14 days save so now it's going to wait for 14 days and then we're going to simply resend that reminder again so we're going to press add an action and this action is called go to go to click on the go to option and press save and it's going to give you this little green little throbbing kind of sign we want to go back to this email so you can see now it's created this little um little track so they're going to go sign up for the course get tagged send the student reminder email wait for 14 days and send the reminder email again so we've done that that's now let's press save First of all, let's now title our workflow. Really important, guys, you must be titling your workflows. We're going to call this the gluten free course student check in sequence. Now, by the way, guys, you will see inside the workflows and automations playlist on the Techmatics YouTube channel. There are lots of other examples of different ways of creating student workflows, but I am just doing a particular demonstration um, on request today. So here we go. There's one, but there's a few things we still need to do because we haven't yet told the system what to do or how to remove people from this workflow if they either click the Google business link or they click the um, trigger link to be removed from the sequence. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a secondary workflow that is specifically fired off if somebody presses that button to be removed from this workflow. So I'm going to go back into um, Techmatics. Is it going to let me? Yeah, I'll go back here because that page just isn't working for some reason. We're going back to our workflow list here and we're going to create a new workflow. Start from scratch. And this is the workflow that's going to remove people from the gluten-free course reminders if they ask to be removed from the reminders. Now remember, we made a trigger link. So what's the trigger of this? The trigger is, I'm gonna first of all name it, the trigger is that they clicked the trigger link button <laughs> to be removed. So I'm gonna call this um, gluten-free course. Now I, guys, this is file convention naming formats. If you have a particular course, you've got sets of workflows or emails, always start them with the same lettering. So for instance, this is a gluten-free course. Everything that related to this is going to be called gluten-free course dash what it is. It's just going to make it easier for you to find stuff later on. Okay, gluten-free course, um, remove student from course reminders. All right. What's the trigger? The trigger is they clicked a trigger link. So let's click on the trigger. The trigger is type in trigger. A trigger link has been clicked. And then we're going to say to the system what trigger link was clicked so click on add filters select the trigger link is and then type in gluten free stop the reminders for the gluten free course. So um, we can also add little notes to ourselves here remove from workflow or remove from reminders, this is just a note to yourself 
so you can see it in the workflow itself. Save. So they've clicked the please remove me from these reminders. I like to also add a tag here. So press add a tag, add a contact tag. And what's the tag? Um, has asked to be removed from the gluten free reminders. Okay, gluten free course reminders. Lovely. Add tag. Done. That's now going to save as a tag or a note in the system. Now, by the way, you can actually also add this as a note to their contact record if you want to. So to do that, you just press add a new action, note, add to notes. And you can simply say here, custom values, contact, full name, has clicked the button to be removed from the gluten-free course reminders. Just that will add an actual note inside that client's file in their notes section. Just FYI, that's what that does. Now, all we're going to do now is remove them from that reminder workflow. So let's press our final action. And we're going to type in remove, remove from workflow, remove from workflow. And is it this one or is it another one? Well, it's another workflow. What workflow do we want to remove them from? the gluten-free course student check-in sequence. So we want to remove them from that check-in sequence. Save, ta-da, done. So the other thing I might like to do here, if they've been asked to be removed from the reminders, you could ask them for a review at this point as well. So I might press add an action and type in review, send a review request. How do you want to send it? By email, save, boom, save. So now what we've done, is we have created a workflow that's triggered when somebody purchases a course or a product. It sends them an email with their login details with the two options to either say, I'm finished, which will send them to the Google Business Review, or they don't want to be emailed reminders anymore, which starts a new email sequence, which removes them from this workflow. That, my friends, is how you can create just one of any variety, unlimited possibilities of a course reminder sequence. Does anyone have a question? So good, nice, easy. How good is that? Helpful? Can I can I um, watch the recording again? Because I need to follow up from the is beginning. It, it's right, it's here, quite challenging for me. Thank you, Shara. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have recorded today's session. This will be immediately uploaded to the Techmatics YouTube channel um, straight after today's session. So do keep an eye on the YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed so you get all the latest updates and, and uh, training that has been published. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, one more question. I'm really curious about uh, why you're delivering the workshop. A lot of people here. But when you recording um, and publish on your uh, website, it only you with slides. How did you do that? Sorry, say that again. Uh, normally when I do, uh, I record my students. So my student face also in my uh, my, ah. uh, my video. Huh? But uh, when yes. you teach for the whole group, only you and the slides. Yes. Okay. So um, if you are recording any workshops at all, you are definitely going to want to reuse those recordings. And it's yes. better for privacy to obviously not have your students' faces in there. There's a couple of ways of doing that. First of all, you can pin only you in the view. So what I do mm -hmm. is if yeah, there's a little three dots above your video and you can go pin and that will just bring you up only. But the way you actually do this is inside your Zoom account itself. So if I'm going to take you into my Zoom account over here, I'll show you where you do this. You need to go to your recordings and if you go um, over here to recordings on your main menu. Yep. When you go to download your recording, you need to download the speaker and screen view only. So in oh. here, um, here's, let me let me pick one from the other day. Um, oh, that's still loading. Let me just pick this call over here. Let's pretend that that's today's session. There's these three little tiny dots over here. Um, one of them is download everything, but what you actually wanna do is click on the file itself and it will open up this second window. Oh. And you'll see here, you've got an option to download the speaker view. That's okay. the one you want. It will be speaker and slides because this one didn't actually um, record us. We didn't have screen sharing on this. So there's one called speaker view and screen share. That's the one you want. 
Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't need to buy a webinar Zoom at all. No. <laughs> Saving. No. <laughs> no, even with all of the training I do, um, I also don't have the webinar expense either. Oh, yes. I should cancel it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I, uh, I, I already registered for a uh, course to concept, but I was yeah. moving house in, in oh. March and April. So, so busy yeah. with internet connection as well. So can we, can I do it again? Uh, Absolutely. You can, go, you can go back and watch all of the content and recordings that are sat in there waiting okay. for you. Thank you so much, Shara. Thank you so much. Have fun. Bye-bye. Karen, I think you had your hand up, did you? I did. Great. Love this. Um, okay, how is there a quick way to retroactively put all my past students into this new workflow? Yes. Okay, great question. How do you add people to a workflow after you've created it? So um, there are many reasons why you might want to do this, but here's how you do it. You're going to go into your Techmatics account and you will go into your contacts area. Here, what I tend to do is create a smart list for whoever those students are. So you can either do this manually by going through, maybe you can go into filters here and you say everyone who's purchased this thing, everyone with this particular tag. But let's pretend you know, you've got a bunch of students, let's put in virtual Vera, artificial Arthur, counterfeit Cody, pretend Peter, simulated Simon, right? Let's pretend these are all my guys that I want to add to this course, fictitious Fiona, you can join it as well. Um, you're gonna click everybody, and then you've got this little robot face at the top where it says add to automation. Click on that and it will say, what automation would you like to add them to? So you're gonna say, say yes, okay, proceed. Which workflow? Ooh. Workflow, which one? Ooh. Why is it not letting me do that? It's not showing them there. Did you publish your workflow? Oh, I didn't press publish. <laughs> that one, that one. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't do that. Um, so yes, if you've pressed publish, then it will show up in this drop down here. And it says, do you want to add everyone at once? Do you want to schedule them in a little bit of a drip mode? So if you're going to be adding hundreds of people, you might want to put it in drip mode um, just in case you get any spam or bounce rates or anything. But if it's only a small group of people, add them all at once. Here it's going to ask you just to put in a note to yourself for your records as to what this action was about. So I normally just say something like added to the gluten free course workflow. This just shows up in your bulk flow action reports um, for later on. And then you just press add to automation and boom, all those people will now be added to that workflow. Good. Um, Richard, you got your hand up. Hi, Sarah. Thanks. Great to see you. Uh, thanks for all this. Um, did you say you've got no Zoom account? Mm. No, I do have a Zoom account, but I don't pay extra for webinars. I just use normal Zoom meetings for all of mine. Um, I do pay extra to have more attendees because I think on the free account, you can only do 40 minute sessions. So I pay yeah, yeah. Zoom to be able to do unlimited duration sessions. Um, I also pay extra to have a certain number of attendees on Zoom meetings. But yeah. webinars, Zoom webinars is a completely separate feature for those people who don't know. Um, that is quite an extortionate separate cost. I've just found in all the time I've been doing this, I've never needed all of those extra fancy features on the webinars button. I just need to make sure that I can deliver workshops that are more than an hour long and more than 100 people can join it. So um, that might be something you want to consider doing. Inside your Zoom settings, you click on your little profile picture. And then there's a section called account, you click on account, and then it gives you the option to add on um, different limits, basically based on what you need. In So you're recording meetings on Zoom, not on your own hardware, is, is that right? Yeah, we're on Zoom now. Whenever I do my Legends Lab workshops, I do them all on Zoom. If I do my um, you know, course creation. No, but they're in the Zoom cloud rather than on your hard drive. I download them from Zoom. I deliver the live meeting in Zoom and then I download it from the recordings and then I upload the recording to Techmatics. Okay. Um, yeah. Where do, there's a section in, uh, in the um, contents on Techmatics for reviews. Um, mm -hmm. So how, how do you get reviews to appear on your sales page? Um, so there's a number of different ways that you can do that. 
you can get a bit fancy with your Google business profile and collect an embed code that will embed the live reviews in there. But generally speaking, that's actually like a web page or build element. So I'll just show you where that is and how there's one of one again, one of the many ways of doing anything. Let's click on websites and funnels. Um, I'm just going to pick a random template from websites right now. Let's pick a, something random over here. Um, let's build a new website from scratch. Let's call this Sarah's cool business. <laughs> All right. Create. If I wanted to have a reviews element on my web page of any kind, if this is a core sales page, I might want to have reviews. If this is my home page or my speaker bio, I'm going to press add a new page. Of course, you can use templates, by the way. I'm just going to put Sarah's home page. Okay, what path do I want? Home. <laughs> Might not let me do this because I think I've already got one called home but uh, in this test account. It's going to give me a blank page to create. Let's press edit. I'm going to just create it from blank instead of using a template here, just to show you how I pull the reviews element over. Let's add a full width element. Let's add a single row. Okay, uh, elements over here. Click on sections, not sections, sorry, elements. And when you scroll down your elements over here, have we got reviews? Yes, we have. There's your reviews, doink, drag and drop. Okay, and now it's gonna give you the option to kind of basically fill in reviews, customer reviews over here. And why aren't you doing it? Um, now, I'm correct in thinking this sucks them over if they've left the review through Techmatics, correct? Sorry, what's that? Yes. Mm -mm. It does, yeah. So this is actually a dynamic element. If these people have left a review for you through your connected Google business profile, um, this actually is a dynamic element and it will show whatever reviews you've had come through there. So how you do that, guys, FYI, let me come out of here. Oh, it may not be saved. It's annoying because I don't have any real reviews on this because this is a demo page. But I'll just show you guys where to make sure your review section is set up. You go into your settings on the main left hand menu of your page. This is going to take a minute, I'm sure. There we go. Bottom left hand side, you've got settings and scroll down here and you've got reputation management. Click on reputation management. This is where you connect your um, review pages. OK, you've got Google business reviews. If you click on that, you can pop in your Google business review link there. If you want to send people to your Facebook business reviews page, you pop that link in there. If you've got some other custom reviews platform that you're using, you can put that custom link in there. That now connects your account and boom, it will now um, offer people that automated review request in the workflows section. But also if you're using the reviews element in a page, it will automatically pull over any reviews that you've had through that connected account. Now, also the other way to do this is I do often just manually create little review sections myself. So if I was gonna go and edit this page again, one thing you could do, for example, is I just um, often copy and paste and pick out like three top reviews that I really want to highlight because not all the reviews you have might you might not want to show them all. Like if you've got some bad ones, you might not want this to show or if you only want to highlight some really, really good ones that are relevant to the thing that you're selling on that page. What I might do instead is go over here and go and create sections um ooh, let's go to a three column section over here oh, i've got to put in my row first apologies let's go to one column and then add an element i want to add in sections rows there you are rows three three rows so i've got one two three rows now and then i could i like where is it the image with text where is that gone an image feature there's loads of ways you could do this. You could just add in an image. So let's do that. Let's just add in an image. And you might like to put in um, just five stars or put in that person's face if you've got permission to use their photo. So for example, um, in, the image, in the image creator here, if I was to click on this image, over here on the right-hand side, what image do you want? Let's click and edit the image. Let's upload from our media library. I could either upload a picture of that person or you know, I could even go to unsplash and type in five stars 
just I'm just giving you a whole bunch of different examples of what you could do here. Oh, none of those are good. I don't like any of them. But if I found a nice five star, you know, like this up here, I might pop that in there. And then you could even go add an element, pull over a little bit of text and pop it inside that box. And it could say something like, this is the best course I've ever been on. Um, and then you could even add like a little bit of extra text with the paragraph section underneath it. And that could put your person's like, you know, little quotation mark of whatever it is they said about you. So if you wanted to just feature particular ones, that's something you could do. If you want to suck them over, you can do that as well. Make sense? Yeah. Um, thanks, Sarah. Just another quickie. Um, you had a support email, support at Techmatics. Yeah. Should we set up a separate email for support? Um, I wouldn't if you're just running a course based business. No, um, I found that sometimes, you know, if they're, it, it, you know, unless you're really offering like technical support and stuff, it's not really necessary to add that extra expense, that extra email communication line. As long as people can communicate with you, um, I would say keep it as simple as you possibly can. The only reason we've got external support lines is because we're a software company and we have over 50 people that access the support line to manage your queries. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Brian, you've had your hand up for a while. Hey, Sarah, question. So I have an online academy as well as coaching, but I, if you think about a business builders course and it's broken down on the four pillars, marketing, sales, production, ops, et cetera, and inside each one of those might have five additional videos. Mm -hmm. I noticed that it looks like you might've taken your bundles and broken them out individually and then according to colors and numbers. So I was curious why you did that as opposed to it It makes it the course look more robust. There's a lot of scrolling going on. So it's really attractive that way. I was curious why you did that. And I'm an expert in several Facebook groups. So I have a VA that goes in there periodically. Somebody will ask a question that I have a video for, some content that relates to that. So I'd like to be able to say, hey, I have some content if you'd like to take a look at it, but how would I go about giving them access to that one-off video without, because that's a paid program, mm -hmm. but I have to give them access for free, but it's inside a bundle. And then how do I market to them and upsell them? We're really, I'm struggling to figure out how to do that. Okay, so nice of... questions. Thank you. So I'm going to give you guys two different separate tips here. One is a question related to the way that you visually lay out your different trainings inside your courses area. The other question that's just been asked is about how can you basically be that absolute go to expert who has a video answer for everything inside Facebook groups It's a really cool way to say, Hey, Sarah, I've actually got a video to answer this. So I'm going to go into both of those separately. So let's first of all, start off with the question about how do you kind of lay out your courses. Now, of course, as with everything, there's no right or wrong, you are the creator, you are the person who's in charge of your programs and how they are experienced. But one of the things that uh, Brian's referring to here with my example with my legends lab is I have so many trainings. Um, I've got something like well over um, 90 plus mini workshops that are all on demand training for my Legends Lab members to go through. Um, and one of the pieces of feedback that I got for people from people was that A, it was pretty hard to find things that they were looking for. And the search bar only shows the product based on title rather than all of the individual lessons that are inside of it. So we wanted to make it easier for people to find very specific stuff, but also as we've seen a trend change recently in that people are preferring micro learning, that breaking up my training from big fat courses into mini trainings and mini workshops, A, gives you more stuff to sell, B, enables you to provide really explicit, fast, highly customized responses to very specific questions that not only can your students inside your courses already find fast, but also that you can use to answer questions as part of your social listening and social interactions. So I'm gonna show you my actual real Legends Lab right now behind the scenes to show you what I'm talking about here. If you have lots of micro training, 
and lots of workshops and lots of resources and products in your courses and products area. One of the things that you are going to want to do is categorize those so that it's easy for you to, and let me just put this in library order. FYI, here's a little tip for you. When you're looking at your dashboard as the admin, it's going to show you whatever stuff's been edited latest. You want to change your view to library order up here, and it's going to show you what the student sees. And you can change, by the way, the order of the stuff your students see by clicking on library sorting, and that will let you drag and drop everything into the order you want it, your, your students to see it in. But if you can take all of the workshops and all of the courses and products that you have and kind of categorize them into categories, into little groups of similar topics, this is a really smart way, if I do say so myself, <laughs> to organize this and make it easier for your students to find stuff. What I have here are my course thumbnails and the library sorting, those two things together have completely changed how my students experience their Legends Lab dashboard. So first of all, when you've categorized everything, go into your Canva account and create new course thumbnails that are colored based on the category. Now my Legends Lab, any of you who've done the IP framework training with me that helps you break down your IP framework, it teaches you how to break down the steps of your training that you teach. My Legends Lab has 11 stages, which translates to 11 categories of training. So what I've done here is I've got rainbow color is my basic introduction stuff. It's like, here's where all your monthly workshop dates and times are. This one is all your Q&A sessions, dates and times. Here is your new AI personalized success checklist. By the way, if you haven't done this in the last 24 hours, go and do it today. This is a brand new AI generated bunch of questions that will pump out an actual worksheet for you with a personalized checklist of exactly what you need to do in your business based on your circumstances and points you to which training in the Legends Lab you need to go to to learn how to do it. But all this rainbow stuff basically is your admin. Then I've got all the pink with number one on it is everything that's in my first stage of my Legends Lab journey. And they all relate to the same topic, which for me is all about um, planning for profit. Then I've got section two, category two is all about monetizing. Then we've got organizing in yellow. Then we've got creating your products in blue. You get the point, right? Then five is all about visibility, marketing, social media marketing, and it goes all the way through the 11 stages of my Legends Lab with everything categorized. And most of these just have like one 90 minute workshop in it with whatever downloads or worksheets go with each of those workshops. Breaking it out like this has not only made it easier for people to find the very exact thing they're after, it also has enabled me to make these things individually available on their own because then each individual product can have its own offer. You can have unlimited offers per product. So if um, in Brian's example today, this I Map Your IP framework, for instance, might usually be paid. Let's pretend just for today on this very special occasion, I'm going to gift it to somebody for free. All I would have to do is go into offers or I'd get my VA to go in and make a free offer for every product I have just to use if I need to. I'm going to go to create offer and this is my map your IP framework free access link. Okay, which product is it? Then I've got to go through and find map your IP framework. Now, one of the things I hate about this is we haven't got a search bar in here yet. Um, can't find it wherever it's gone. Where are you? Okay, I'm not going to go through and try and search for that right now, but let, let's pretend it's that. Okay, <laughs> you're going to choose that particular workshop, set it to free, press create, and boom, you now have a free link. All right, there's your link, get link. So now I could literally go into Facebook and someone said, I've got no idea how to create my IP framework. Oh, now I can choose it here. There we go. IP framework. Oopsie. There we go. Boom, found it. Confirm. And now I can remove that one. <laughs> so now it's the right product. <laughs> Press save. <laughs> so now I can literally go, oh, hey, Sarah, I actually have a little course on this. This is usually a paid program as part of my Legends Lab. However, don't tell anyone between you and me. Here's the free link. 
I whack that link into their DMs or via an email or whatever inside the Facebook group itself. And it will take them straight to the checkout. And this isn't live, obviously I haven't published it, um, but that will take them to that checkout if I published that particular thing. So you do actually need to press publish, which I haven't done. See, it's on draft right now. Um, that is one way of giving people that free access. Now, the other way to do this, Brian, it's something that I've done, um, I do, I've done for years as just a pure habit of my production process for courses and training is whenever I have recorded a training, I also upload a copy to my Google Drive, just in case for backup. I also always upload a copy to my YouTube channel as unlisted. What this means is if I do want to just share the link with somebody in a social listening exercise, if I'm doing a presentation, <laughs> for whatever reason, I can either give them the Google Drive link or the unlisted YouTube video link if I want them to just go and view that little video by itself without having to sign up to anything. So they're going to see that in the members section. And so that would be my courses. But then on all courses, would it still show them all the courses that are available. So the idea is that I want them to see and view that course, but also see what is available to them. So they're like, oh my gosh, what is all this? This is amazing. Yeah. How do Absolutely. So in that case, then if your whole purpose of giving them a little free thing that would normally be paid and the whole point of that is so they can see all the other stuff they could have from you. Great marketing method. I would be creating that free offer to one of your products. And then when they log in, they're going to see everything else that they could buy from you and be able to buy it from their portal. And so then the automation just comes off of the access to the membership then, correct? Um, so again, I also inside my membership usually have a separate automation for every product. Um, so if you did, if there was something you've picked out that you're willing to give away for free to give people a taster of, you might like to create a separate workflow for that, where you could go, the trigger is new enrollment for this product then I'd create an if else condition saying, you know, did they buy or not buy? Like, was it was it the free offer checkout link or was it the paid offer checkout link? If it was the free one, send this email. Hey, Sarah, I know this is normally paid, but I've given you a special free access. P.S. You're going to see loads of other cool stuff in there. Please buy my stuff. <laughs> if they've come through the paid offer checkout link, then you're going to send them those bunches of emails saying thank you for being a member, blah, blah, blah. So it's like having a multi-stage kind of like, here's the, that sounds good. I've got a course on that. The VA knows there's just multi-steps because once you do it once, you have it forever. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can duplicate every workflow. Cloning and cloning and then just yeah. keep it. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Awesome. You're amazing. I just can't take it. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I've had a question from Vanessa who's asked who's replaced Chelsea. So our amazing tech spec Chelsea, who was with us for two whole years, um, got an unbelievably um, amazing job working for her government, which, you know, I'm really mad at her government about, but she really deserved that incredible opportunity. <laughs> uh, we have already placed her with the amazing Jay. I don't know if Jay's on the call today or not, um, but Nat, uh, Nat and Jay are working very closely together. Jay's um, an absolute pro in everything back end on tech. Um, so do get in touch with Nat Vanessa and she'll be able to introduce you today if you'd like to give him a little trial, a little test if you'd like to be your your preferred um, tech expert going forward. Um, I've, is that anything else you wanted to ask there, Vanessa? You got your hand up waiting? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I actually want to ask you and Brian a question. I'm very intrigued with the fact that you guys are wow. able to put in your stuff in Facebook groups. Anytime I try to add anything of any kind of value whether it's a video or a PDF or anything, I get blocked. I immediately get rejected because it's considered selling, even though I'm just giving information. So I'm really curious how you bypass that because I have not been able to do so unless I'm a moderator of a group. Yeah. So now I'm a moderator of all these groups and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, I'm, I'm drowning in that. Yeah. You so, know, it's a little bit like living on the wild side, like everything I go to comment on, I'm like, I know that if I share this, I am risking being booted from this group. So, uh, you know, it's you just never know what, what people's rules are or what mood they're in or what they're going to do. Honestly, I always just say to myself, is writing this or sharing this worth getting booted out of this group for? If I'm not really that bothered about the group, then I'll just say, you know, I don't put necessarily a link to something they can sign up for very rarely. 
Um, I would usually just say, I've got a video on this on YouTube, and that's where I will use the unlisted YouTube video link, because then you're not actually collecting leads, and they tend to be a lot more okay with that. However, enter at your own risk. <laughs> There's no rules. There are everyone else's groups. That's how they roll. Okay. And if you can make sure that you and uh, Febby uh, read the uh, chat messages, I sent you a couple of direct messages. And I'll see you at the end of the month. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I will go around and keep um, answering questions. I see Amy's got hers up, but Corey has asked first, can we do a workshop in the future for calendar integration with Techmatics and Google? Um, absolutely. There is actually already a bunch of those on the YouTube channel, Corey. So if you do check on calendars. Also, uh, about a month ago, there was a tutorial on how to use the service-based business calendars as well. Um, so that is already on the Techmatics platform, uh, on the Techmatics YouTube channel, if you do want to go and look up those tutorials. Tutorials. However, and um, that sounds like a great repeat training to do next week, Nat. Uh, so we'll get Nat to do that. Um, okay, uh, we've got Jay's email as well in the chat box. That's brilliant. Um, Amy, you've got your hand up there. Yes, um, I'm really struggling with like building some landing pages, and this is new for me. But yeah. do you? And I, I've just looked on the YouTube page. And of course, I haven't had time to watch all the videos, but I'm not seeing anything that looks promising to be very detailed on that. Do you have anything? Yeah, so that landing pages bad. stuff is on um, the website's playlist. So the best way for you to find training is by going to the actual playlist section of the Techmatics YouTube channel, because um, we've categorized everything on there. Let's go to Techmatics YouTube. Um, if you click on the Techmatics channel, and then you go, oh, something's gone wrong. Okay, let me just go to tech tags. Must have okay, websites, blogs, funnels, landing pages, and domains. Uh, playlists. If you click on that playlist button there, and you should have one called websites. There we go. Yeah, websites, blogs, funnels, and domains. There should be um, a bunch of training yeah, in there. Oh, have got Nat talking. <laughs> there should be um, the sales pages one there and there's a couple of others however um, we can certainly create some more trainings in there for you as well but there's loads and loads and loads of videos that relate to page building and website building in that playlist which are all down there okay I'm the playlist I'm looking at it's a different format of course it's it's more horizontal but I'm only seeing like 10 videos what manner of witchcraft is it that you, you have access to all these videos oh. What am I doing wrong? Um, <laughs> Amy, I actually sent a link to the playlist on the Zoom chat. Maybe you can check it out. Thank you, Nat. Thank no you. problem. <laughs> And don't forget as well, you can also hire tech experts by the hour. If you go to the Techmatics website and click on services, you can hire one by the hour and they will actually build with you whilst teaching you how to do it at the same time. So that can often be for the sake of $50, a much faster way to learn what you need to learn. Total bargain. Yeah. Thanks. I'll be doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, who else had a hand up? Anyone? Any more for any more? Um, Deborah said, thanks so much, Sarah. Need to catch my breath. I know I do speak a bit fast. <laughs> any more questions? No. All right. Yes. Oh, Wait. yeah, Amy. Nat, Nat, did you say you posted that in the chat? The, yeah. the link? Okay. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. Got it. Um, Sarah, I've got a question. Sure. Um, the um, when you're adding an, uh, an upload to a um, an email, it's got a complex URL. Is it possible to change the name of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, great question, guys. You can um, add documents that people could download as a clickable link inside an email. Now, first of all, you need to upload that document to your media library. So let's pretend, for instance, you want to give people access to a PDF or a download of your slides. Um, obviously, there's a million ways you could do that. You could link straight to a Google document, um, but you can also use your Techmatics account in the same way you would use Google Drive. So you would basically go into um, Websites and Funnels, click on Media, and here is where you upload your media files. A uh, perfect example, I was delivering a presentation at a conference recently, and I uploaded my slides to my folder here. Okay, so all I did was press upload a file, and I dropped a PDF of my slides. Now, when I click on that file, 
it gives me a clickable link over here, link to clipboard. That's the same as like a Google Drive link. All we do then is go back into our emails. I'm just going to switch this to the Toolbox account so I don't do anything to mine. <laughs> um, in the Toolbox account here, we're going to go into an email and let's pretend I want to make this document immediately downloadable. Go to Marketing and Emails, click on Email Builder. Obviously, I go and clone my master. Um, let's pretend I'm just going to go and find a recent email we've just done. There's a new template. What I can do is simply say, here's the, let's do text, drag, drop here and it can Bye. say here are the links or oh, here click here to download the slides click here to download the slides from sarah's prezo okay where it says click here you're going to make that bold you go into the little linky link text and you paste in the link that you've just taken from your media library you can even change the color if you want it to stand out i often do that just so it stands out more and boom, press save template. And if I was to now preview this, let's click on the three dots, press preview template. If I click that, it's going to open, well, it's not gonna do it in this one because it's in a demo account, um, but that will open up um, that document or that file. Oh, it has opened it, there we go. <laughs> it's opened it, boom. So that's how you can link to anything, whether that's an external URL, whether it's a link to one of your files, whether it's a link to one of your courses, is that what you meant, Richard? No, no. Um, oh. <laughs> um, like I've I've got a uh, couple of forms I want people to fill in, so I send them an email with those forms. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want uh, the URL is a complex um, uh, dot PDF, I think. Or no, it's a link. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you so... use that in exactly the same way. So I would type in "click here" to fill in the form, and then just hyperlink the words "click here." So instead of showing the whole URL, you're just highlighting the text that's clickable. The other option is to add a button. So um, again, this is a good, really good demo for people to see. If I'm just going to duplicate my screen here and show you um, what Richard's referring to. If I have made a form, like an onboarding form I want people to fill in, I'm going to go to marketing and emails. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to uh, websites and funnels, click on forms, go to form builder. And I'm going to create a new form. So obviously start one from scratch. I'm just going to take a take one as an example here. So I don't have to sit and rebuild a whole form. Um, here's a form that I might want people to fill in. I'm simply going to press integrate and copy the link. So this is the link to this form that I need people to fill in if they've purchased a service, for instance. I'm going to go back to the email that they receive when they purchase that service. And I could, for instance, grab a button, drag the button over, and it will say in here, please fill in this form. Okay, what's the link? The link is the link to the form, which you've pasted in over on the left-hand side here. Save template. So now, if I press preview, when they click on, please fill in this form, it will open up that form. Make sense? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I've got two more hands up. I'm not sure who is first. Um, Brian, I'll go for you next. Susan says, I learn so much every time. Yes. <laughs> do you do a lot of A-B testing, long form versus, versus short form funnels, or do you just sling it and then iterate once you find out if it's hitting or not? Yeah, look, this is um, this is really uh, how much time do you have kind of question. Um, by the way, for those who aren't aware of what is A-B testing, A-B testing is when you can create two versions of the same thing, i.e. you can create two versions of an email and see which one gets the most clicks. You can create two versions of a funnel and see which one gets the most clicks. And this is a really advanced version of a uh, process of marketing. You can do that in Techmatics. Every time you create a funnel, you can turn on A-B testing and see what the stats are on each funnel. Um, and you do exactly the same on emails. I personally don't have time for that. <laughs> I just send out my emails. If I'm not making sales, I'm like, why? I need to change the copy. I need to change the page because um, I'm just like, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, one day I might um, doubt it. <laughs> but um, just FYI, that is a feature that absolutely is available for the people that love data and love testing. I know some of you really do. If you do, please come and work for me. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> it's uh, it's well worth giving it a go, though. I mean, certainly for emails, because it's so easy to put two different emails together. Um, why not give it a go? See what happens. Some people are just, it's long form. I'm, I'm making funnels and 
my team is saying my funnels are too long and I'm like, well, long form, maybe short form works. Any experience with that? For your um, so my my main advice with how much should be on a sales page is the cheaper it is, the smaller it must be. If you've got a free opt in, do not have anything more than what I call the first thumb. If it's free, you literally want the banner. Get this, get this result. Sign up here. Boom. If you put anything else on something that's for free, you're going to lose conversions. If, however, your thing is a high ticket, you must have long form. Anything that's over $500, you are gonna need to please explain here. <laughs> They're gonna wanna know what I get, how I get it, how does it work, who the heck are you? All that stuff needs to be in something that's over 500 bucks. So that is a huge amount of data and testing that's been proven time and time again. The more expensive it is, the bigger you better make that page and have the buy button sporadically spread throughout it. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. Pleasure. Amy, you had your hand up. Can't hear you. Sorry, you're on mute. No, I, I may have accidentally clicked a button. Sorry, Sarah. Oh, cool. Nice. All righty. Um, I will take one more question and then I have to time out for my next session. Richard, yeah. 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 Um, I've been sending emails out and I expected people to uh, show up uh, as clicking links, but they don't seem to be. But you referred to trigger links, so are there two different types of links? And do I need to put a trigger link in the email? No, or... so the, um, the only time, if you're just sending normal links out, you're just going to use that normal hyperlink function. And um, the only reason you would use a trigger link is if you then need to have a separate automation then run based on that link being clicked. So a trigger link, purely the purpose of it is because you need some other action to happen behind the scenes if that link has been clicked. So, um, you know, again, don't overcomplicate stuff unless you need to. Now, if you wanted to do some kind of follow up and when if somebody clicks this link, then I want to follow up with them in another way, then you would want it to be a trigger link because you're going to want to say, hey, first name, I noticed that you checked out my X, Y and Z course. Just wondered if you'd like to have a chat about it or book a call. You know, that's a follow up that you might want to purposely action as a result of that link being clicked. In that case, I would use a trigger link. If it's just you're sending out a normal EDM, a normal email marketing email, and you don't need to do any particular follow ups, just a normal link is fine. Okay. Your so if they click, a, they... click the link to, which is a page on the website, should not yeah. appear in their contact information? Yeah, absolutely. So I was just about to say, um, because with normal links, you can still track that information. Number one, the first place you're going to see if people click links in your email, whether it's a trigger link or a normal link is in the contact's actual profile inside their contact record in the activity section. It will mm. show if they've clicked anything. The second place you will find that data is in the email report itself. So if you've sent out an email, you go into your campaigns and you can view your data and it will show how many links were clicked and who clicked the links. The other thing you're gonna find is if it was a link to a sales page that you've hosted in Techmatics, it's actually gonna show in that funnel page or that web page statistics, who, how many clicks that page has got. So there's all those different ways that you're gonna be able to track that data anyway. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Alrighty, I am going to have the time out there, guys. Um, I've been on for the last three hours and I have another bit, bit of lunch to eat before I start again in 15 minutes. So um, thank you so much um, uh, for coming along. I hope you've learned something new. Don't forget the tech experts are there to help you if you want to book one hour for 50 bucks. They'll come in, take over your screen, help you do things as well as teach you at the same time. You've got your 24 hour live chat support. There are real humans on there. They cost me a freaking fortune all right so please use them <laughs> when you're logged into your account um, there is a little purple chat box at the bottom left hand side of your screen you click on that you press live chat and a real person will be there to help you and we also have heaps of done for you services if you're like hey i just want this whole web page built i want this calendar set up i want my bot trained right go onto the services page on techmatics and there's loads of done for you services we can just hand it all over to the grown-ups who know what they're doing 
there as well. Um, someone say, Brian, I'm debating if Sarah is real. Has anyone met her in person? I am trying to clone myself. Um, and talking of am I real, um, the 17th to the 19th of July, Book yourself a holiday to the Gold Coast in Australia because I will be running the Legends Lab live conference. You are going to get three days with me in person. We are going to absolutely blow up your businesses and do stuff in those three days. Um, if you want some more info, put a drop something in the Facebook group and I'll give you the link to go and check out the Legends Lab Live. It's going to be insane. Can you imagine the three full days with me? Um, you're going to need vodka or something, um, but it's going to be amazing. So <laughs> I look forward to seeing some of you there. Can't wait. Happy tech-in. Ah! Thanks. Uh, Thanks uh, see you, Legends. Bye. Bye.